one. Today I want to talk about hierarchical clustering. And the idea is the following. So last time we decided in advance the number of clusters. So in this case we could say that maybe the best choice was 5. Then we assign different colors to different points according to the distance to those initially random clusters. And then we were refining the cluster according to this mean value or the median or whatever. Today we're going to follow a different approach. So and the idea is the following. So we're going to start putting every point in its own cluster. Well, I wouldn't call that a cluster, but okay, stick with me. Let's call them singletons. Okay, now we have to do the following. For, for each point, we're, go we're going to calculate the distance to each other point. And this is very expensive computationally, and actually, I, if I have n numbers, this is going to take me n square calculations just in this step, okay? So the second step is that I want to merge the closest points in, in this diagram of distances. So in this case, these are the closest ones. So now we have 10 singletons and one two-point cluster, okay? Next step, we recalculate and, and then we have to make a choice and, and I will discuss that later. But the question is, if I deal with this cluster as a whole and I take the mean value or the largest distance or the closest distance, but I, I will talk about that later, right? You get the point. Okay, next step, we iterate and now the, the, the closest ones would be this two and then probably this one, okay? So we start over and over again, repeating uh, the, this procedure now let's calculate again now this is the winner now this one okay now you see that we have two singletons and three clusters until we have a huge cluster containing all the points and this is called for obvious reasons uh, clustering by aggregation okay let's repeat the process but in the meantime we're going to build something which is called a dendrogram it's a kind of tree in which we are following we are tracking the, this aggregation process so remember we started with all the singletons and then we connected these two points, the two points in the diagram, and then these two. And then we had uh, three two-size clusters, and, and the rest of them were singletons. Now we have a bigger cluster there, and so on and so forth, until we have this huge cluster in which we have this tree, showing us the way in which we have aggregated. Okay, So this is called a dendrogram. And the, the, the utility of this is that if we cut the dendrogram here, we start with all the singletons. If we cut the dendrogram there, we have only one cluster, and depending on the height in which we are cutting the tree, we can have different choices, different possibilities of this clustering. Okay, so as I was saying, there are two types of clustering. So one is called agglomerative clustering, or Agnes. This is a kind of, I know, bad joke, which is agglom agglomerative nesting. And the idea is that we are building this, this dendrogram or this clustering procedure bottom up. So we start with all the singletons, and then we are clustering according to some similarity measure until we iterate in, in, and we have this big cluster. So the other possibility is called divisive hierarchical clustering, or DIANA. And the, the procedure is top-down, so first we create a huge cluster with all the distances computed, and then starting with the root, in, in which all objects are included in a single cluster, we cut different branches of the tree until the, that division makes sense for some homogeneity or some internal consistency of the cluster, until we end up with all the singletons. Okay, so you, you have the, the two sides of these two processes. Okay, so uh, Diana would be something like that, so we start with a big cluster. now. The most meaningful cluster according to some homogeneity of, of, the, of the parts would be cut in there, then maybe cut in there, and so on and so forth, okay? So probably now you're thinking, so what? So why do I need a tree? And why k means it's not good for you? So this is related to the one million question, which is how many clusters? So let me show you why this dendrogram idea is nice. So let's define a dendrogram in a more quantitative way. So basically you see that first I, I join these two singletons, two and four, and then I join another singleton three. On the other hand, I had these two, two pair of points coupled together, and then we have the huge cluster, okay? So the height is the distance that we reduce when we incorporate an, another element to a cluster. So this was an outsider for two and four, and now they belong to the same cluster. So we have reduced the distance, the overall distance between the, those points. Okay, so I'm going to do the following with the dendrogram. So I'm going to define the height, the distance between these lines, Okay, so we have the short distance, the medium distance, and the large distance. And I'm going to take only the largest one. And for the largest one, I'm going to cut that part of the tree. And as you can see here, I have two cuts there. So the criterion is that if I have to cut in the largest distance, then I have two clusters. So that's the best choice for the partition of the data. So the benefit of hierarchical trees with respect to k-means, let's say, is that we cut where the ga gap is maximum, so we have a quantitative criterion to, to decide which is the best option. Another example, again, 
we compute the distances between different aggregations, different branches of the tree. And now this is the largest one, that one in the middle. And now we do this cat and we have one, two, three cats. So three cats, three clusters, easy peasy. Okay, let's take a look at the data. And you see this, this corresponds to this cluster, then one singleton and another singleton. Okay, looks nice. Another example. Now we take those lines. Remember that we are comparing the, the heights of these or horizontal lines. And then this is the largest one, cat, okay, one, two, three, and now we have three clusters that correspond to these clusters here. That uh, makes a lot of sense. Okay, sometimes the differences are not huge, and, and there are a couple of solutions that could be, could be winning ones. So imagine this case, we have this, probably this is the largest distance, and in this case we have the larger gap. We have two cats, so we have two clusters. But this situation is also possible, so maybe the, this jump from here to here is comparable to this jump. And in that case, we have five clusters, so which is the best choice? So sometimes we have to compare different metrics or even use cross validation. So remove some data points in the data set and try to see if they converge to the same solution. So this is the solution for, for this cat and this is for the other cat. Of course, this is meaningless because in this case, we would say, okay, I don't want five singletons, but you see the point. We have still a question to solve. So when we decided to include this point into the cluster, that was because probably the distance between these two points was small, but the distance between these two is not that small and probably is comparable to this other point. So the, that algorithm is called the single linkage. And the idea is that it doesn't matter how many points I have in a cluster, the only points that matter are the closest ones. So this would be something, it would be like a metaphor of the support vector machines that we cover in other parts of the course. So only the support vectors are going to decide. But we have other possibilities. Another possibility would be more conservative would be to try to compute the maximum distance. In this case, in order to aggregate a new data point, I would compare with the largest distance to each of the other points. We also have the average linkage in which we somehow take all the distances possible between clusters and then decide if one point is going to be into one of the clusters or the other according to this average. And we could, could also replace the average by the centroid, that the centroid, remember, that is one point in the, in the cluster that is closer to the, to the center of mass, to the average value. And probably the most popular one, or the most, I would say, stable one, is called the Ward's Minimum Variance Criterion. But the idea is that you want to balance a couple of things. On the one hand, you want to minimize the variance within the cluster, so all the points in that cluster are packed together. But on the other hand, you want to maximize the distance between clusters. So what's the whole point of all these classifications? And, and, and here you have an example. So the problem with single linkage with respect to, for instance, complete or average or word linkage is that in this case, if you cut there, you have a lot of heterogeneity. So here you have clusters with a lot of members and you have tons of clusters with just one member. So you can see here, you're not, you're not looking the, the lines dropping down, but you can see here that you have a lot of singletons there and you're splitting the, this data set into a huge cluster and tons of, of singletons. And this is not true for complete or average linkage. So this is why you prefer to do a more conservative algorithm, okay? So I will show you how to calculate these things later in R. So uh, here I'm going to show you that if you replace the default method, which is complete by single, and then you replace this, uh, this parameter to minus one in order to see these drops there, you see that the, the largest uh, distance is going to be this one. And in that case, you have one, two, three, four cats. And the problem with four cats is that you see that you have huge cluster there, um, very small cluster and a couple of singletons. That doesn't make any sense. So you can compare the complete versus the single linkage. And of course, this is trumping this other one. Okay, so this is the end of the video. Some pros and cons. The, the, the best thing with hierarchical trees is that you, got, you have this built-in automatic number of cluster feature and the other thing is that you have a hierarchical view of the process so you have a tree like and that improves interpretability you can also think of this tree like a kind of decision tree but instead of training that decision tree you have learned that tree from the data and i love that possibility the, the worst part is that this is computationally expensive so at each step of the algorithm you have to calculate n squared distances and you have to repeat that until you have all the elements in one cluster and that means that you have to do n cube operations so you have let's say a thousand rows in your data set, that means that you need a million store distances and, and you have a billion, American billion operations to calculate that. And the second thing is that the choice of the metric has a huge impact in, in the final clustering as we have seen comparing complete versus single.